Hello everyone and welcome to episode 15 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by the incredible Lucy. Lucy is the force behind Wild Roots Foraging and has a passion for helping people reconnect with the earth through the forgotten ancient practices of our ancestors. In this beautiful, honest and inspiring episode, we discuss our need to reconnect with what Lucy fondly calls Earth Wisdom. We explore our mutual love and respect for the weeds, our native wildflowers that are beneficial not only to our own health, but the intrinsic health of our desperately struggling ecosystems. She shares with me her incredible 10 year journey that has seen her transform her own health through foraging and how she has gone on to find ways to share this wisdom and bring community and support into the lives of countless wild women and also wild men. So they too have a chance to flourish once more. Her final thought reminds us that at our core, we are all inherently foragers. Hello everyone and welcome Lucy and thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of the Nurture by Nature podcast. It's honestly really lovely to have you with me and I'm so excited to hear more about your story and and share what you're passionate about. Um, I just like to start each episode by asking my guests a little bit about their nature story and how nature has been a part of your life and how that's maybe evolved over time or you know just anything that you would like to share about your sort of memories of nature in your life thanks for having me firstly uh really excited to be on such a beautiful podcast um love the messages you're trying to spread it's brilliant um uh yeah so my nature stories yes uh definitely first thoughts are definitely of childhood um I think that's where my journey begins I think I was really lucky um to have to be born in an area that you know it was still um it was still lots of houses and things but there was a lot of um green space around there was a lot of trees there was a lot of hedgerows um there was a lot of grassy places to sit and play um and it was a very safe area um to kind of maneuver around as a child you know you can just like kind of move between um on your bike quite safely and get to the next green space so even my primary school um we had this a fantastic hedgerow that went up right up the middle of the field and it kind of divided the fields and I think that was the original idea um to divide year groups but it wasn't very kept so it was quite oh, these, nice. they were yeah. quite big and they had like perfect um seats and like kind of dens and houses within them um so I remember like spending a lot of time in there with my friends and we'd like you know be making each other cups of tea and like feeding the baby and stuff like that um and just make making little homes within them and then even like at the end of my road there was another hedgerow that had another um bush where I could hide in and it had a seat so I could sit on it I remember just thinking like nobody can see me this is brilliant you know like I would like watch people go past I was even like make my mum look for me so just I could laugh at her (laughs) (laughs) because I could see her and she couldn't see me um um, and I spent a lot of time just sitting outside within those green spaces connecting to the plants and the trees and the bugs um and I've got memories of talking to them um and you know like catching the seeds that fall fall from the trees from the sycamore and um all sorts of lovely memories like that you know and then I think I'm also lucky that I had um a really uh, engaged dad who spent a lot of time with me um and he would always take me out um so it wasn't just spending time with me inside it was like right let's go to the park right let's go for a walk and even as I got older in my teens he would take me on a walk up the hills because that's what he liked to do. Yeah. Um, and he'd pack us some sandwiches and some coffees. Um, and even one time he, he invited my friend and I must have been about 14 or 15 at this point, And he took me up on the hills and he said, right, we're going to learn some uh, how to f- use a map, basically. Um, so here's the map. This is where you have to go. 
um see you there and he just dumped all this stuff and he ran <laughs> off and we're, and we're all like what <laughs> <laughs> we were like, like pretty terrified but we did it um and he must he obviously must have known that we could do it um but he put his you know he do little things like that to kind of raise my resilience a little bit as well I yeah. think um yeah. and I look back now and I'm like god I'm so glad he did that because over time I lost it I lost all of it I lost my connection to nature I lost my connection to self um and you know that's just part of life now isn't it society gets its grip on you and it shapes you into something else um and I don't think we even think about that we have an option not to do that a lot of the time you know it's just well this is what I need to do um so we do it and we change and we become something we're not and then for me and I think for a lot of other people you you get to this point where you hit a wall and you go and you and you just you have a breakdown a bit of a breakdown so you realize things aren't working for you anymore and it's actually making you ill um and I got to that point and I had a huge breakdown and I realized that the traditional ways that we're encouraged to explore of healing uh sorry modern ways to uh, we're encouraged to explore um of healing that uh, you know I, I did explore at first I was I went on antidepressants uh and I calorie counted you know that sort of thing yeah. you know like I was yeah. mentally and physically unwell so I was like this is what I'm being told to do and they sort of focus work. on the body really don't they rather than yeah. um yeah, yeah absolutely wasn't working I had a massive sugar addiction <laughs> and I felt tired all the time and I was starting to get arthritis in my hands as well okay of like early 20s yeah um so not good uh and just yeah just generally like feeling really bad and I think that it I I explored like started to explore natural healing um and I think it it probably came a bit easier to me because I of those early experiences with nature um so I suppose I had some sort of like deep trust for nature maybe because of those early experiences of connection because I know it doesn't come easy for everybody to trust natural remedies instead. Yeah, yeah, and we're we're, we're sort of for me. yeah, we're, like um, we're told not to, aren't we? That's that's the yeah. the sad part about it. And yeah. but it sounds like your your body was screaming out to you, like, and the the screams were getting louder, and it was saying, "No, you've Lucy, really? it's time to to do yeah. something about." That's it. Yeah, and I also, um, you know, I pushed myself with education, so I didn't do very well in school. Um, and I recognize now that the trauma that I've experienced in life and living unauth- not authentically as me um, was really affecting my concentration at school, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, basically all the symptoms of ADHD. But I do see the trauma started that um, yeah. the things that I've been trying wasn't working. So, you know, I was on antibiotics a lot over the years in my life. Um and I feel like, you know, if I, I was getting infections a lot, like water infections or throat infections or ear infections. You know, I just get infected yeah. all the time and I was always yeah. needing antibiotics. Um, I realised how how important education was on my journey as well. So I really pushed it, didn't do well in school, but I knew how important it was to my own empowerment, to my own um, autonomy and financial security and I pushed and pushed and pushed. And I ended up being like an adult learner. Um, so at, first, at first it didn't work. I had to do some healing. Then I went back to college and eventually cracked it. I went to art college. And then I had a, the most amazing, amazing teacher who didn't give up on anyone and just was so very like positive and like helped us to see our potential instead of like putting us down, um, which is what I'd experienced in school. Yeah. and she got me to go to university and oh, I'm gonna feel so emotional even you know talking about that now <laughs> yeah um and I did a graphic design degree oh wow oh amazing um and during like that university experience was so important because especially you know the essays part um they got us to think critically they got us to do good research um and you know like wikipedia isn't good enough you've got to have lots of (laughs) sources and all of this right so that taught me so much because then i had the skills to look at those methods that had been being recommended to me 
And suddenly I was able to find all this scientific research that was proving <laughs> that it wasn't the way to go. It was yeah. actually being more detrimental because those all those antibiotics that I've been given were actually destroying my gut microbiome. I was going to develop resistance for them in the future mm. if I continued on that path. And how important the gut microbiome actually is. And then that led me on to like things like pesticides as well and how that's <laughs> killing off our gut microbiome. Yep. Literally mm. like all of the all of the chemicals that are in everything that we I am putting on my body and in my body. And I'm like, and that link between the gut and the brain and our emotions and how we're feeling. I'm like, no wonder my mental health and my physical health is, suffer- is suffering. Yeah. I'm literally just poisoning myself every single day. Um, and I started to recognize that things had to change. And I wasn't there yet though with it. Like I had a lot of years of research to do before I really got to got somewhere with it. Um, and then I fell pregnant and and then had my babies. And this is where I had like more breaking down of, you know, realizations of how women are treated um, and how that's affected and how our babies are developing from an early age um, and the trauma that we all experience um, as parents and, you know, in, in our early years and how that's affecting things as well um I think it's um it's really hard isn't it because I think in many aspects like there's been a breakdown in the true sort of support and community feel that is in our society so when you're you know become a mother I mean sort of ancestrally you would have been supported by your family and your village and your you know but the sort of wise motherhood of you know elders wouldn't you and and now it's kind of you know that's that's all been taken away from you and you're just you're just told it's supposed to be the happiest time of your life and um it's feel bad if yeah yeah you don't, if you're not fully enjoying yourself or like you know you show any signs of not like not being happy with what you've been given you know oh yeah. they're, but they're gonna grow up so quick you know and yeah. you'll miss it and you know stop worrying and this is the problem we are constantly taking power away from mothers constantly so I had to fight as a mother for so many things just to be heard just yeah. to have my view on things trusted I like that's, that's a big yeah, thing that Nobody is a huge trusted. thing isn't it they, mm-hmm. they sort of you know they kind of make you feel quite stupid like yeah. oh you're yeah. just you know you're just a regular person you can't know anything and it's <laughs> especially like, women yeah. like especially women or they it's like this thing that we've been passed down I don't know if anybody knows the history of how women have been treated in the mental health industry um over time um, but we still carry some of that now this view that women are just hysterical and they must just need medicating or like you know this disease attached to them um disorder attached to them and so it was really hard to be heard so I had like you know even from the start I want to breastfeed and the amount of pushback I had on that, oh, no, you won't be able to do that. Oh, no, like it's really hard from the start, really negative responses. And then when I did start breastfeeding, it's like the amount of advice I got from people who didn't breastfeed and didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Um, even like the health visitors, oh, I didn't breastfeed and they don't get any training. I, I've learned that because I became a breastfeeding peer supporter. I have more training than health visitors in breastfeeding. Oh, wow. Yet they wow. give advice. Yeah. it's like you don't know what you're talking about so why are you giving advice um you're not qualified to give advice I even I wasn't qualified to give advice I was only qualified to give information yeah and then yeah. that empowered the mothers to make their so, own choices yeah that's it so you're you're sort of um a neutral advisor basically saying well this on this side yeah. this is these are your options yeah. this is the these are the facts you yeah. decide what to do with that information <clears throat> and the, and I wasn't getting that I, I had the, the the manhandling of the boob and the baby by the midwife uh-huh. <laughs> she actually like grabbed my boob and shoved it in my baby's mouth so you know we don't even have ownership of our bodies uh, yeah I was um, gonna say that's that's quite um in intrusive isn't it it's like you know <laughs> yeah she's like yeah. well I can do it there you go you should be able to do it. just do that <laughs> and then she yeah. left and I was like well I can't do it turns out my baby had a tongue tie oh, and nobody God, recognized and I was getting the blame and yeah. tongue ties are huge but nobody's acknowledging it yeah because that that means that it's going to cost a lot of money to change how we do things um so um, the NHS doesn't have that kind of cash right now does it so yeah 
I mean, it, we're very lucky to have a healthcare system, but uh, it does have limitations. And it's one of them is they, yeah. trying to get people sort of through it and out of it as quick as yeah. possible, isn't it? Is really, yes. particularly with mothers, it's like, you know, you, you know, you're sort of on a conveyor belt, aren't you? It's in and out and off you go. But yeah, so we, we had, I had all of that and I had, you know, anytime there was a problem, like I would go to the doctor and I'd be like, I've got breastfeeding and pee support training um my baby's got thrush I need this cream um and they'd be like hmm, they'd send sign for something else and I had to, I'd have yeah. to go back and I'd, I'd have with a print out like this is what I need yeah. <laughs> you know and um and yeah just time after time like I just wasn't heard even when I went and did like counseling sessions and CBT and things you know I had yeah. I feel like there was so much judgment every yeah. step of the way so much like pointing at my failures all the time telling me how I needed to fix my life all the time um and it's and you know and there was just so much that really impacted me and I really did have a huge mental breakdown and got really angry about everything yeah because well, um, I mean you're just being disempowered aren't you all the time and and told to disconnect as well disconnect from you can't know what you're feeling so you know don't don't feel it basically and yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's it. So it's through this breakdown that like I'm really grateful for the breakdown because like what I recognize now, what is commonly called a mental breakdown, I recognize now is it's actually just a breakdown of all those beliefs and systems that I've been given to me. Um, in suffocating you basically and suffocating me and they need it knocking down um and then it was kind of I've been rebuilding it ever since and so it started off with uh reconnecting with nature because when I was doing my research on antibiotics I was like I'm not going to do antibiotics I need to find another way so I started to research um what I could do instead it turns out it's really easy (laughs) really easy to not have (laughs) antibiotics right but they're just not giving us this information. I have not had an antibiotic since, and that was thirteen years ago. Yeah, I don't. I'm I'm the same. I'm. I, I, my doctor probably doesn't even know my name. In all honesty, but um, yeah, I don't. I don't know when I last had antibiotics. Um, yeah, yeah, it makes such a difference. And and a lot of the things I was researching for, like whichever condition I was having, a lot of the time there was like things that I could forage myself. Yeah. That's what I was noticing. I was like. Yeah. At first, I started off in like Holland and Barrett, spending fortune, you know, yeah. like health food shops. Um, but then eventually, I was like, "Hold on a minute, nettle." Well, I've got nettles in the back garden, yeah. and I think again, like you know, because of the the things I've been reading about chemicals, me and my husband had also decided to start growing our own food. Okay, yeah. and when we did that, immediately I was reconnected with nature. I had my hands in the soil. I, I could smell the chemicals from the earth, and they were, you know. Yeah. They were back inside my body taking you're connected to the plants as well as they're growing aren't you you know you're you know you're nurturing them and you're you know you you go out and you're like oh how are you today (laughs) and I find that as I was doing certain jobs in the garden these like epiphanies were just coming to me like stories as old as time and I didn't know where they were coming from but it was it was wisdom it was wisdom that was coming to me like I remember picking out dandelions and like digging them out and being like, I need to get these roots out, you know. And then all of a sudden I realized, like, get into the root of the problem, you know, and like, and it, and it was just like, oh my God, that is from that is literally wisdom from the earth. We say that all the time. Yeah. But yeah. that's earth wisdom. Yeah. And how old is that wisdom? How yeah. long have we been saying that for? It yeah. must be thousands of years maybe even longer than that you know um and it's you know these so these little messages come to me whenever I connect with nature and they come to me from the earth from the from whatever um activity it is that I'm doing with the earth and it's just like whether it's just you see it as an epiphany whether we're just connected putting two and two together and all of a sudden we realize something but I think that was the way it was meant to be so it's been therapy for me as well I think that's the lovely thing, isn't it? It's about um, remembering and reconnecting rather than necessarily learning something new, isn't it? Although it feels new, but it is, it's something that's kind of, when you learn it, it it feels like it's always been there and it's been a part of you. It's not, you know, you're not, yeah, you're not adding something new. You're just like discovering something. And this is the thing that I realized is actually this wisdom 
nobody's telling me this. I'm t- I'm coming up with it myself. It's inside me already. And I just needed the space with nobody going, me, 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 you need to do this, you need to do that, which was blocking me, like being able to think and get to the wisdom for a start. But also that connection to nature where I can actually learn lessons from what we see around us. And, you know, we see, historically humans have just done that, like a lot of the things that we design um, and then we see around and we use every day. That technology came from nature. It was inspired yeah. by nature. Yeah. Velcro, for example, um, that comes from the burdock um, or like the, the other plants that are very similar to burdock where they have um, these hook hairs on their yeah. seeds. Yeah. And somebody went, that's a great idea. I'm going to do, I'm going to create Velcro. You know, a lot of the things that we do today have been inspired by nature. And that's, that's that inner wisdom that we, that we can access when we connect to nature. Yeah. And I just, I'm like, oh, this is so powerful. People need to know this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is like where Wild Women was born as well. And, and the foraging as well, you know, because originally it was like, it's helped me so much, so much through plant medicine, through the the wisdom, through the connection, through the peace and the clarity, just like that chance to unwind, to breathe, to get oxygen, all of these amazing benefits. And I just know that so many other people need that. Um, I love the fact that you say it's um, what's important about foraging to you as well is about it being it is accessible to everyone like it's this healthy nutritious larder that it doesn't matter if you live in a flat and have no garden you can get out there and and find these these plants and and they can help you and and provide like healthy nutritious whether it's food or medicine Um, and I think that's that's a a really important message isn't it because sometimes for a lot of people they feel like they can't do it because their circumstances doesn't allow them to but I mean I love that that your part of your story was you started in in a town and city and you don't have to be like have a big garden or or, you know be in a rural landscape absolutely I don't know if anybody's ever seen pictures of Middlesbrough before (laughs) (laughs) it is just like industry town like and to look at it, you would think you can't forage there, but there is green pockets everywhere. And it, especially yeah. weeds, you know, like um, it's something we really need to start encouraging our can- our councils to stop spraying the weeds and to let them flourish. Because not only does nature return, not only is it better for our air and things like that, but it, we can forage then. We can we yeah. can eat with it. We can, well, and, um, and they're, they're brilliant for like the insect life and the birds and things as well. It's just absolutely. like our whole you know, this biodiversity crisis that we're facing is partly because we're, uh, you know, our weeds are our native plants and we're eradicating them because we don't think that yeah. they're attractive or useful or pretty. So we called them weeds and had to <laughs> weed them out, didn't we as well? So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's and, it. yeah, 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 absolutely. But yeah, so I started in Middlesbrough. There's a, there's a Victor- Victorian park called uh, Albert Park. Um which is the the town's green space really it, there's not many of them in Middlesbrough um so this is a really great place it's full of trees uh there's kids parks there's lots of grass there's lots of um and there's lots of weeds as well weeds <laughs> yeah. um and I have so many lovely memories when I lived in Middlesbrough I've lived in I live in Gisborough now closer to the hills and things which I've only lived here four years um but at the time, just wandering around there and like, um, you know, foraging brambles and going home and making bramble, bramble, bramble crumble and even like finding a huge patch of cowslips. And it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And I was like, oh, my God, they're gorgeous. And I was like picking some, took some home to put in a jar. I didn't have a clue about them at the time. Um, and I know I know lots more about them now. I know all of their medicinal properties and that they you can literally eat them and they taste nice and they're protected as well. So you only forage them from um, or the rare, basically. They're not yeah. fully protected, but they're rare. So you only forage them from areas of abundance, too, and be really respectful and try and help them spread their seeds as well so they can return. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's important, isn't it? Is is being mm-hmm. responsible in in foraging as well, and um, being conscious of of not like stripping everything. Just you know, taking a little bit for yourself, mm-hmm. making sure you leave the plants you know enough to survive the that there's stuff for the the animals and the insects and birds as well. 
Absolutely. So, so important. We've got to remember that, you know, we are nature. And when we're abusing nature, we're abusing ourselves. And it's it has a detrimental effect on us. You know, the all these years of farming intensively, um, literally deforesting the planet. And and look where we all are now, you know, mm. because of because of greed, because of capitalism, because of globalization. Um everybody just wants more money and more power, you know, we're at that space now and now where we're really poorly now as a species and we have other species dying out every day and they're really poorly too and our planet's really poorly and it's like we're not getting anywhere with this it's not working for us and I really think that we need to start returning back to variety back to abundance in nature because actually even the microbiome um, science that's coming out now is proving that those who have the most amount uh of bacteria different different um strains. different types of bacteria yeah. different strains of bacteria yeah. the more strains of bacteria that you have in your gut the healthier you are the less you'll get ill the longer you'll live yeah. um and you know you know you're not going to get that from eating the same five things on your plate every day you know like uh, uh, we eat the well, same especially people. when they've been produced through like you know sort of intensive factory farming as yeah. well um That's killing the bacteria as well yeah the sprays and the the chemicals and things and yeah so we really need to get back to variety by having as 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 many different plants in our diets as possible and that's really easy to do when you forage because you're just literally adding it in and adding it in you can still eat your everyday daily things that you're used to eating but I just like a lot of the time I'm just adding it in now as well um so I've got more in there and more nutrients and those nutrients are what makes me strong stops me getting ill I've not being ill at all this winter not at all oh, wow <laughs> I, I mean I so you've got a wonderful Facebook community which is um is it wild, wild roots um wild, wild women wild women yes yeah wild, wild women. women that's it and um I would definitely encourage anyone listening to go and find you I'll put the links in for them to to find you but yeah I love I love seeing the pictures of I mean what you create with with forage food is just like on this amazing level these lovely like amazing oh, I mean they yeah they just make my mouth water sometimes oh, <laughs> I see you. your incredible posts and pictures and but yeah just, that's my next passion is like for me I had to learn foraging for years on my own and then um I would find that something's edible and I'm like great how do I eat it how do I process it what do I do with it you know and then uh, there's this big gap and you have to go off on a tangent to research that and we don't have a lot of time so like my goal is to kind of share those ideas and recipes so people can be even if they don't do the exact recipe they can be like oh but I can use it like that oh I didn't know that you know and it inspires them and then they've just got a general idea of how things can be used and it's, again it's something that now I know it's really easy yeah. um to yeah. incorporate it in but in, until you get to that point um it's hard yeah. so it's, it, it is hard, hard when you've never done it before isn't it I mean um yeah. my sort of introduction with foraging was actually through my horses and I had a horse that mm-hmm. was um similar to you he was um he was had a disease and was quite ill and modern medicine didn't you know have really a solution for him and we tr- yeah. we tried the treatment a few times and it didn't really help him so you know, I started just, you know, taking him out and I was in touch with a herbalist and she was saying, do this and do this. And then we'd just go out and he'd forage in the hedgerows and I'd watch what he was eating and I'd be like, oh, what's he eating and, and what's that good for? And, and you know, go back and learn like all the plants and what they're, and it's just, it's amazing how much is just like, you know, on the sort of roadside, roadside verges and just incredible. Um, but I love it you because you do you do walks as well, don't you? You do organised foraging walks so that if someone has never got any experience, they don't you know they've never really looked at a plant, they don't know how to identify anything. They can come along and and join you and and learn. And people are always so shocked on those walks. They're like, I thought we'd be walking miles to find this food, and and they're like, I've literally walked a few yards. Like. <laughs> <laughs> we've been introduced to 10 different edible plants like it's amazing how much is out there that we can eat and we were so surprised it's like what this has been sat here this whole time and I can eat it and it's nutritious and it tastes good um it's just incredible and then another thing that I do as well as I also because when 
I find it hard if somebody's if I've been on an event and they've told me something and I'm like wow mind blown and yeah. then I go home and I'm like can't remember anything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I've put together like a good foraging guide so everybody who comes on my walks gets my good foraging guide oh, brilliant. Um, and inside there it's like the important stuff really that I talk about at the beginning of every walk where I cover um, the law um, yeah. how to forage safely how to forage sustainably the things to avoid, the benefits, the caveats, all of that stuff. Yeah. That's just really important. The things that stop us from foraging, because I don't want anything to stop people from foraging. I don't want them going, oh, my God, I'm going to get in trouble for this. Or I better yeah. not do it in case somebody tells me off. Or, oh, my God, I'm going to poison myself. Yeah, yeah. So it's a really simple process that we can use to make sure we don't poison ourselves. So I give that away and I put it in my good foraging guide so you can remember it. Yeah, uh, not that is really important because I think um I mean I've I've done things with like essential oils and things like that and there is sometimes a belief that as it's natural it's completely safe and it, that's not the case and yeah so it it does need to be done with sort of mindfulness yeah. and attention and mm -hmm. consideration um whilst it is accessible to everyone like actually investing in or either joining groups like yours or the I mean there's some lovely groups aren't there that will help people with identification and things and if they're Absolutely. not sure um and just yeah finding someone that can give you that start if you've got no experience of it at all yes and absolutely yeah yeah we need to reach out to each other as well again because we were supposed to learn as as a community and from learning from each other from our elders from those who had a bit more experience than us and just passing all that knowledge down and we're so segregated now we're so separated uh from each other and we find ourselves like having to read books on our own and go online on our own and things like that and it's not very natural so i do like encourage people to this is why i, I started the group as well um because i wanted a space where people can connect and help each other and support each other and share information and just I know it's online still unfortunately we can't all have we're not yeah. quite there yet with the go going back to having our villages and that that sort of lifestyle but with, you know I still think connection is key it's so important um and I've, I've just I do have another group as well uh where anybody can join um so that obviously the wild women group is women only but then I've got another one um that anybody can join as well um so yeah just so because yeah, I because I've um I've seen as well you you I don't know if it's new or you've been doing it for a while but you've also um you're doing like wild men as well aren't you which is um is beautiful as well because as well as the foraging you you've partnered with a, a great gentleman haven't you who also does um these beautiful support circles for men as well because I think like obviously women we've we've obviously suffered a lot of suppression and separation and things but there is there's also a, a struggle for a lot of men as well isn't there in um huge society yeah. especially especially men I think who are in touch more with their feminine aspects um and they they also find that you know the society is leaving them a bit like like you suffered with you know sort of broken basically isn't it and oh, completely broken I think in in some aspects like there are things that are much worse for men um because you know I guess at least at least with women we it's okay for us to socialize and network and open up with each other and we've we've always had that and men really haven't and if in fact as children they were even punished for like showing emotions yeah. that are, unless it was anger or you know if yeah. they were crying if they were sad or anything real that men don't mean, cry kind of uh, yeah, yeah yeah and that's it they they were literally um literally punished for it or abused for it um you know I've heard some really really sad stories and the thing is these men grew up never realizing that it was there was anything wrong with it as well yeah. um that you know that they deserved it and they carry that deep shame around with no outlet. Yeah. And I'm a big believer in um, I don't run circles for mental health. I don't run uh, circles to fix you um, or anything like that. We are all equal. Right. We're all um, we're all we're all a bit. We've all got our own demons that we carry. Everybody. Yeah. In society. There's nobody who has good mental health and bad mental health in this world right we just have we have different baggage we have different experiences and we have you know responses to those experiences that are very normal and very human and it's also um I think it's important that we don't 
attach our identity to any label we might have been given as well mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. you know our, our mental state and our emotions are transitory as well aren't they so whilst you might be having a particularly awful time at the moment like you're not what you're labeled as it's it's just something that you're going through and, and you can move through it so absolutely and I think that's why people get stuck because yeah. they're like what's wrong with me why why can everybody else cope and I can't like I'm I'm bad there's something like inherently wrong with me and they get stuck there but in, this is the good thing when we connect with other people when we hear their stories we go oh it's not just me yeah <laughs> you know, like, the relief oh, floods through you doesn't I'm it so yeah. glad other people feel like that or experience that so we've yeah. got nobody telling us, right, I think you should fix yourself like this and with a pen, yeah. you know, like we've got nobody yeah. doing that. Nobody. We're in a circle. We're equal. Right. We're just sharing our stories. Yeah. And we're, being we're, seen and heard like yeah. we mentioned earlier, just, you know, having that, that sort of, I don't want to say validation because that's not quite right, but, but it is just, validation yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. We, and this is the thing we need as well. We need our emotions validated and nobody does that. Like, you know, it, we, t we live in a world where the second we open up about anything, like, Oh my God, I feel really nervous about that. Somebody will turn around with all intents being really good, but you know, well intended, but they'll turn around and be like, Oh, don't be nervous or don't yeah. be scared or yeah. don't feel like don't feel like that or yeah. see it see the positive you know and somebody's always telling us how to feel how not to feel how to fix it yeah <laughs> yeah that's it instead of just being like yeah that makes sense yeah um totally makes sense you've got this big scary thing coming up and you feel scared about it god I would feel like that as well if that was me you know validation is so important and that's where that's what moves us from being stuck when we're stuck thinking there's just something wrong with us, we're broken. Yeah. It's the validation that moves us from that place into, oh, I'm not broke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm normal. I'm human, just yeah. like everybody. <laughs> but it is like, it's just this wave of relief, isn't it? It's like, oh my goodness, it's not just me. It's not just me. It's like, there are yeah. other people who are experiencing it or have felt it. And yeah. Because that's the birthplace of shame, isn't it? When we think we're broken we yeah. think there's something bad and inherently wrong with us and that's what keeps us out of that logical brain where we can think we can make good decisions and we can realize oh that you know everything's fine I'm going to move past this that's where resilience is you know um and we get stuck and we can't access that and it's you know so it's, that's why it's so important isn't it we need yeah. people to feel good about themselves again and go oh I'm not broke I'm I think um it is and it's I think I've spoken to quite a few people now and it a common thread is always the sense of community alongside everything and and I mean community can be non-human as well and I think um you know like you're like you were talking earlier about your childhood and the trees and you know that they, they were a part of you know the insects and things and that was a part of your community and your shared experience and but it it is just I, that's why I love what you do I think it's really powerful is like not only are you making these healthy nutritious um options available p to people and some people have you know like like you said you went to health food shops and they got they might not have the budget for that so being able to help themselves is well, it's empowering as well isn't it it's you know that like being able to take a little bit of control back and be like well I could do this for myself yeah. it's just a really it's a beautiful gift to give people really it's, it's, yeah. it is it's that that's the place we really need to be I think we are at this point now where we're realizing how detrimental capitalism is in so many ways on people and planets the systems we have in place are just failing us massively that just the sheer amount of food banks in Britain now is yeah. shameful really you yeah. know and I just see this opportunity there if if only I could get this message out yeah uh, and it's I mean the food, the food banks are the sad I mean obviously they're I'm so glad that we've got them and people have that option but it makes me sad as well because they don't provide people with like really lovely nutritious food a lot of the time That's either it. do they mm -hmm. you know it's a lot of processed you know mm -hmm. canned and packaged food and yeah. which obviously you know some food is better than no food so I'm not I'm not judging that but like I'm, I'm just saying that to be able to layer that with with the foraging and and 
like you said add those little bits to to your diet to your food um it's just yeah it's it's amazing it's a great gift to give people it is it is and it's like said, people are always so surprised at how just how easy it actually is you know once they learn and people think oh it's going to take me such too long you know I'll never learn it I think that's what's what's good about actually me as an example as well because I haven't always foraged since yeah. being a child you know um I did have this big gap where I wasn't doing any of that and I was living really like I was eating takeaways all the time and just like anything not thinking about my health really eat drinking you know partying constantly not looking after myself um and then it's li- literally only the past decade that I've 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 learned all of this so it's doable you know and even even like you know a decade to teach it yeah. so let's go even further back to actually just in, integrating it into our life that's like half that you know um so it doesn't take that long really doesn't to get this knowledge back and obviously I'm still learning I'm still on that journey we'll always be learning because there's so much out there to learn about yeah. um yeah, so and, and that's I mean that's the exciting I find that exciting I love I mean I love that every time I, I speak to a guest or every day I'm like wow I like you know there's and um and science you know and there is so much science out there as well like you touched on that as well it's like if you're if you're doing your research and not just you know the first website that pops up on google or something mm-hmm. but there is so much science that backs up like the the medicinal and health benefits of of our weeds <laughs> we um yeah it's just I I just I get excited <laughs> you know why because they're deep rooters and they're grounded yeah that's why so it literally is the root systems they're like pulling up all of the goodness from deep below ground for us and uh our, our own foods that we're eating today in the supermarket don't do that they don't have deep roots so like but there's a lesson in that as well isn't it because the more rooted we are the more grounded we are the more we nourish ourselves well I, I was just as you were talking I just I was thinking um that how like weeds are pioneers as well and they often have this ability to grow in like quite harsh environments and you know the the less prime um uh sort of soils and and things you know on the peripheries of of yeah. things and and they hold on and and they and I was thinking of that as like a sort of metaphor for like what our society is going through as well at the moment yeah. and yeah it, that's it the wisdom just comes doesn't it it's amazing it's so so special um and I just want more people to experience that you know <laughs> like because that's where true empowerment really lies, just living our authentic selves. That's what I think our real authentic selves looks like as well, being so deeply connected to nature because we are nature, you know. Yeah. Um, so if you're not connected to nature, then it's not it's not the you're not you're not living authentically. No, uh, no, that's it. You're you've you've shut off a part of yourself, haven't you? Really, you've disconnected from from part of who you are. Um, absolutely. And it is, it is sad because it is sort of ingrained in our society that this sense that we are separate from nature, you know, we, um, there's, there's some interesting books that, that you can read about how this sort of evolved in human, in our human society and that, you know, a few, few I- people had these ideas that actually, you know, humans were the, the top of the pyramid and we were superior and separate and, actually how that has just literally rippled out and pervades our whole sort of thought about nature and society and and actually if we take a step back and look to more sort of um I suppose their sort of um indigenous world view isn't it Mm -hmm. um and and we there's a lot that they have to share that we can learn from their view of being a part of the natural world the natural cycles and um I think that's powerful as well because sometimes we see ourselves as the enemy to nature don't we and actually we need to sort of step into our role to be a part of nature and, yeah. and we, we can be supported supportive of it yeah. um well our original role was guardians of nature we were the guardians we were taking we were the caretakers we were looking after the world and making sure it thrived um and in return we were provided abundance and again for more like archaeological evidence that's that's been dug up recently recently is proving that our ancient ancestors they didn't struggle for food they had they had everything they needed um 
so yeah like you know I think it is a common perception or we really struggled back at you know back then but we didn't um so yeah it's as soon as we stopped living so closely connected with nature in that way um as guardians that that's when we started to struggle but then there's a there's a a disconnect from the actual fact that we are struggling now isn't there (laughs) so yeah you know it's like we look back and go oh but they really struggled and it's like well actually have a look in the mirror how how is our society doing now Mm -hmm. um you know like like yourself you know people struggling with with mental health issues health issues you know there is a lot of struggle in in Mm -hmm. our our modern society um Mm -hmm. it's just perhaps a different element that's sort of to the fore with that struggle but it's still struggle isn't it so oh well it's been lovely talking to you Lucia it sort of feels like we're getting to a natural place to sort of round up um I don't know is there anything else that you would like to you know any sort of messages on your heart I suppose that you would like to share to the listeners about foraging or just anything anything that sort of pops it pops up to be just don't listen to that voice that tells you I can't do this this isn't for me because it's for everybody this is how we started um you know we've been we were foragers for the majority of human existence that's a massive portion is a very very tiny tiny percentage of time in the time frame that we have not been foraging we are all inherently foragers. We are all supposed to be that deeply connected to nature. That is where authenticity lies. So if you're telling yourself, it's not for me, uh, that, you know, I can't do that. It's not true. That's coming from another place. And I really encourage you to question it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love the way you've just framed that. I'd never, I'd not actually put that together myself the fact that yeah we we are inherently foragers and it's you know it goes back to what we were saying earlier doesn't it about remembering and reconnecting rather than you know forging a new path and yeah yeah that's really that's really powerful I really love that thank you so much Lucy thank you yeah it's been a pleasure and I'll I'll put in the show notes the information for people to look you up and see if if they're local to you or if uh, I think you've got also information um about because you're a member of the association of foragers aren't you so if there's people who aren't local to you they can perhaps find someone who's who's nearer to them to go and learn from and explore this amazing world um yeah well it's been brilliant brilliant. thank you so much thank you so much thank you thanks for having me my pleasure Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.